In this video, I would like to first talk about the concept of fair bets and then the calculation of the insurance premium for fair insurance and its payout. Then I will talk about the investment decision under uncertainty. So let's look at the idea of fair bet first. On the surface, it's quite straightforward. That is, it's a bet with an expected value of zero. It's rather easy to understand if this bet costs you nothing to take. So you pay nothing to enter into this bet, and it can give you some positive payoff or negative payoff, but it has an expected value of zero. Let's look at this example here. So consider flipping a fair coin. You can receive $1 if heads come up, and you pay $1 if tails come up. Very easy to understand. And the important thing is that this bet is free. It costs you nothing. You pay $0 to pay it. So let's consider its expected value. Because it's a fair coin, there's 50% of chance for the heads to come up, and 50% of chance for the tail to come up. So 50% times $1 that you receive plus 50% times $1 that you have to pay, it's a loss for you. And that will be 0.5 plus minus 0.5, which give us zero. It's a zero expected value. But let's consider another example. Now, in this bet, you actually need to pay $1 to play. So you need to pay this $1 up front, and then if heads come up, you will be able to receive $2. But if tails come up, the host of the bet pays you nothing. In this example, we have to consider the $1 paid to the host up front. And then when we consider the winning reward, we need to use the $2 to deduct this $1. That's the actual change in your wealth. So the payoff when the heads come up is 2 minus 1. And then if tails come up, you will lose 1. Then the expected value of this bet is 0 0.5 times 2 minus 1 plus 0 0.5 times minus 1. One key observation is that we can pull out this minus 1 from the two parentheses. It's 0.5 times minus 1 plus 0.5 times minus 1. That gives us minus 1. It basically says, no matter what happens, you have paid $1. The bet cost you $1. And then there's 50% of chance that you will be able to receive $2. The expected value of this bet is still zero. It's just that you have to pay some money to play it up front. And that is exactly the situation for insurance policy. You have to pay the insurance premium up front. And then in the case of an adverse event, such as an accident or some natural disaster like wind damage, then you will be able to receive the payout. So with this basic idea, let's look at what we can learn about fair insurance policy. Still, we start with the expected value of zero. Now, PF is the probability of fire. That's the disaster or the damage that we have to consider. In the event of fire, the insurance policy will pay out a reimbursement. I use RIMB to denote the reimbursement. And we have to pay the premium, PRM here, to purchase the insurance policy up front, so as to get the so-called coverage. The coverage usually lasts for a period of time, and in most cases, it's either half a year or a whole year. So for fair insurance policy, it should have an expected value of zero. And if there's no fair, then the probability for that even to happen during the covered period is 1 minus PF. And during that period, you will just pay this premium. You cannot get the premium back. 
But if there is a fire, then you will be able to receive the reimbursement for the fire damage. But still, you have already paid the premium. So in case of fire, PF times the reimbursement minus the premium paid. And we can rearrange this formula to show that what we have here is just like what we have seen for the bet that costs you $1 to play and pays you $2 if has come up, zero if tails. For the fair insurance, the cost to play the bet is the insurance premium. And then the payoff if so-called win is when there's a fire and you will get paid for the reimbursement. So what we have here is that the expected value of an insurance is the probability times its reimbursement. That's basically the expected reimbursement because otherwise the reimbursement is zero. We can use the probability of the reimbursement event times the reimbursement to calculate the expected reimbursement. So the expected reimbursement minus the premium you paid for this insurance equal to zero. That is a fair insurance. So for this fair insurance, what we know is that the expected payout, PF times the reimbursement, equal to the premium. Also, we can rearrange this equation so that we can see the ratio between the insurance premium and the reimbursement is the probability of fire. To summarize a little bit, a fair insurance policy means that the insurance contract has an expected value of zero to the policyholder. And the expected payout, that is the probability of the adverse event that can happen, times the pre-specified reimbursement equal to the premium the policyholder has to pay. And finally, the ratio between the insurance premium and the reimbursement equal to the adverse event probability to one. So if there is a 20% probability for fire to happen to a house, then the ratio between the premium and the payout will be one to five. But for every $1 premium paid, the policyholder actually only get better off by $4 after the reimbursement because he has paid $1 upfront. So the net change in the policyholder's wealth is just $4, even though the insurance policy will pay out $5 after the fire. Now let's talk about the investment decision under uncertainty. Let's first look at this so-called decision tree. Here, to start, we have a decision node in a rectangle. And then if the decision maker chose to invest in the risky product, there's this chance node in the circle tells us the different outcomes and the related probability for the different outcomes to occur. It is still easier to look at this decision tree from the back end. So to think about this risky project, there are two possible outcomes. The demand for the new product can be high or low, and there's 80% chance to have a high demand and a 20% chance to get a low demand. If the demand turns out to be high, the payoff is 200. And if the demand turns out to be low, the payoff is negative 100. That means 200 profit if high demand or a loss of 100 if low demand. So the expected value is 80% times 200 plus 20% times minus 100. That will be 160 minus 20, which is 140. We have said that for a risk neutral investor, the base to make a decision under uncertainty is just the expected value. So for a risk neutral investor, the decision maker only need to compare this expected value 
versus the alternative. Here, the alternative is actually do not invest, in which case the decision maker will just receive zero. Obviously, 140 is higher than zero. The risk neutral investor will decide to invest. Different from a risk neutral decision maker, a risk averse investor will compare the expected utility from these different possible outcomes and compare that to the utility level of do not invest or compared to the utility level of other alternatives. So let's look at the different utility levels that this risk averse decision maker will receive from different levels of wealth. If this investor received $200, he will get a utility level of 40. And if he lose $100, he will get zero utils. But if he just remain where he is and get zero additional wealth, he will get 35 from the certain wealth level he has. So now let's look at the expected utility from this risky investment. If the demand turns out to be high, the utility level will be 40. So 80% times 40 is 32. Plus 0 times 20% is still 0. 32 plus 0 is 32. The expected utility level is 32. Now, if this investor does not invest, he will get 35 utils. And 35 utils is higher than 32 utils. So for this risk averse decision maker, he will choose not to invest. And this will be the typical decision making process for risk averse decision makers when facing choices under uncertainty and different alternatives.